Hey guys, this is Matt Kinsalon with a video on uh, iPhone development. So this is our sixth tutorial, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to save data that your app stores. So we're going to be saving um, the uh, state of a switch, so whether it's switched on or off, and we'll be saving the um, kind of the progress of a slider. So let's create a new project, and we'll make a new view-based application. I'll call it Save Test. All right, and I'll just type in the interface builder stuff. We're going to have two IV outlets, so um, UI. We're going to have both a UI slider, uh, I'll call it slider one, and we're going to have a UI switch. We'll call it switch one. And we're going to have one universal action, and that's going to be data changed. And both objects are going to call this, so I'll show you what I mean in a second. We'll go into the interface builder project and we're going to hook everything up like you would normally expect. So we will drag this in and drag this in. And we're going to hook, obviously, this up and we're going to hook a slider up, like, like hook the slider up like this. And here's the tricky part. We want both of these objects, when the data gets changed, to call our data changed. So if we go in the inspector and we say value changed, we can drag it to data changed. And now here's the cool thing. Multiple objects can call the same action. So here on the slider value changed, we're also going to call data changed. Uh, and I think that's pretty cool. So here we go. Now let's make this start out at zero just for uh, usability. And we'll make this start off at off. And now we will implement our data change method. So let's go here, and we're going to use NS user defaults to do this. So we're going to declare a new default and make it NS user defaults standard user defaults. And we're going to say defaults set object NS number number with pool switch one is on. And you'll see what this does in a second. And I'll save it for the key S1. And in view did load, we're going to load the same thing. So I'm just going to copy the defaults, paste it in our view did load. I'm going to say switch one set on defaults object for key S1 pool value. Okay, and object for key needs an object. It can't take a bool or an integer or a float or any scalar. It needs to take a pointer to uh, an Objective-C object. So that's why we're using NS number to do that. NS number is the uh, number wrapper class, or the scalar wrapper class, I would call it. Anyway, so we're doing that where we have all that stuff set up. So now it should save the state of our switch. So if we run it, it's going to um, open in the simulator, and here we will set our switch to on. And now if we kill it, and we just terminate this <clears throat> on the what's in the iPad simulator. This SDK is very strange. Uh, now it's on, and if we slide it back to off, how about we slide it on again? And we close it, and we open it one more time, it'll be on. So there we go, we know it works. Uh, it's not just multitasking that's doing it. So let's also do the progress indicator, and this is quite similar. Here in our save method, we'll say set object NS number number with bool and we'll do number with float slider one I believe you can just do uh, can you do value uh, alright hopefully that's fine I'll call it SL1 these variable names can get confusing <coughs> and we'll say slider one set value defaults object for key SL1 float Value. Okay, and so now if we run it, it should save also our slider state. So it's running. Let's put our slider at some random thing. Let's turn the switch off. Let's close it. Let's kill it. You know, still claim it's running in the background, even though it's not, because that's how iOS is. And if we run it now, it'll have the state we see, uh, and it's pretty awesome that way. So here's how the default works. We're just setting an object and reading that object later on. Um, you can also do uh, nifty things like um, 
giving default values for that, but that's for a different tutorial some other day. Um, and before this tutorial is over, I have a question for all of you guys, because I know a lot of my subscribers are uh, from the age of maybe 12 to 16, and I want to know who here has Black Ops, because um, I just got the game, I played it a little bit, and it doesn't seem that great. I'm not sure if it's a great game or not, so uh, uh, if, you, if you didn't enjoy this uh, tutorial, great for you, whatever. But just comment your thoughts on Black Ops, um, as well as questions or whatever you might have about this tutorial. Uh, because that's something that's going on in the tech world, so might as well talk about it. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching Mac Hazel 1. Subscribe and goodbye.